Welcome to Farewell KSP. In this short series, I will be attempting to land on every planet and moon in the Kerbal system, plant a flag, and return the Kerbals home. Absolutely no Kerbal left behind. Oh, and it will be a hard career too, to make it challenging, meaning funds will be tighter than a nun. <laughs> the save aptly named, it was time to begin. What the f even is this? This is not some corny 90s sitcom. No, 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 no. We're not having this. Absolutely not. No. The Space Center. Here is the place I'd be spending most of my time, trying to figure out how to get anywhere with only loose change. A quick trip into Mission Control to pick up the first contracts, and I was ready to launch my first vessel. Launch may be a bit of a strong word to use here, as the cheese it won was not going anywhere. Using this, I gained all the science I could from the launch pad, runway, island runway, a couple of buildings around the KSC, and this gave me enough science to unlock the first two nodes. Science, as it turned out, on hard, was going to be bloody difficult. Next up, escape the atmosphere. With the new tech gained, Cruise 1 was born. This pencil rocket is capable of making it all the way to orbit, but lacking heat shields, I was quite uncomfortable putting it there. Despite common belief, I'd rather not be killing any Kerbals. It sure would be nice to get through at least one episode without any deaths. Even without relying on mech Jeb, Cruise 1 escaped the atmosphere. Jeb, looking wistfully at the throttle, could make orbit, but after several seconds of mission control explaining he wouldn't taste good as a kebab, he saved the remaining fuel to slow down his descent. Despite burning through it all, re-entry was still a little toasty, but after a short time, Jeb was safe back on the ground. The science gained was enough to pick up the next line of nodes, perfect to start working on the first orbital vehicle, inventively named Cruise 2. Still some 300,000 funds away from the first BAB upgrade, this was unfortunately going to be quite small. Jeb being given a well-earned rest allowed Valentina to be the first Kerbal to get to orbit. This was definitely not because Jeb was terrified of my designs from the previous launch. After a slightly wobbly ascent, Cruise 2 made it out of the atmosphere, and this time the vessel reached orbit. <laughs> But not for long, as I am somewhat racing against the clock to complete this challenge before KSP2 arrives. So before even completing one orbit, Valentina returned to Kerbin, splashing down safely in the ocean. The next milestone up, fly by the moon. Still limited to only 30 parts in the VAB, and being unable to create nodes, this would be quite challenging. So instead of going for that, I decided to farm some contracts, badly. After numerous attempts of trying to get an unguided satellite to a specific orbit, I went for more science and unlocked a lifeline, the Terrier. With boosted efficiency, I could complete satellite contracts, but still the money earned was pretty poor. So instead I turned to tourism missions, and with that, my ugliest rocket ever was made. Suitably named the- what? Jeb, now confident in his ability to fly my designs, was given control over the first, and upon staging, the entire rocket- Luckily, the capsules were unharmed, and all tourists made it back to Kerbin safe. Making absolutely no changes and assuming it would work second time round was a silly thought process, but flying this better meant that it got to orbit, and the first of many tourism contracts was completed. <coughs> Having spent far too much on failing satellite contracts, I was still quite some way off upgrading any of my buildings, so more tourism missions were planned. However, this time I forgot to board the tourists! This career is going about as well as it could be, so Jeb by himself flew the what? two to orbit. Who needs autostrut when Jebediah Kerman is at the helm? But no, seriously, this was getting rather silly. Autostrut was very sorely missed at this point. Once again, after a short stay, Jeb re-entered Kerbin's atmosphere and died upon impacting the ocean. Waiting a tad too long to arm the parachutes to save myself a little bit of time was not a very smart move. Having now passed this KSP rite of passage, it was up to Valentina to fly all future missions. There is absolutely no way I had enough money to hire anyone new. Valentina, however, succeeded where Jeb failed, and after completing yet another couple of tourism contracts and realising my money was barely changing, I felt it was time to caveman to the moon. So I put together a new vehicle, the Tor 1. Still only restricted to 30 parts and having no guidance whatsoever, I was less than hopeful that this would make it. But if it does, well, I could have done this about two hours ago. Still suffering from floppy rocket syndrome, the journey to space was less than fun. However, once in orbit, I still had 2,000 meters per second of Delta V remaining. Oh man, I do love the Terrier. Had I had access to nodes, I would be perfectly capable of not only getting a moon flyby, but also orbit and return. As it was though, this time around, I was just aiming for the flyby. As the moon appeared over the 
horizon, I burnt until my Apple apps is roughly lined up with the moon's orbit. Not even having patched conics unlocked, I had no idea if I would reach it until I was there. So with bated breath, I time warped and found myself on a direct collision course. Wonderful, I thought. I shall complete the contract, was my main takeaway. After a short period of celebration, I realized, well, I should probably change this trajectory so Valentina doesn't become a green smudge on the side of the moon. The flyby of the moon done, Valentina was on her way home with a whole load of science in tow. Despite an explosive landing destroying the heat shield, the craft was safely recovered. And finally, I had some fun. Having realized I can orbit the moon using only 30 parts, my main priority was unlocking nodes, so 450,000 was spent immediately upgrading both mission control and the tracking station, and now I could plan my flights. <laughs> Jumping into R&D, solar panels and more advanced probes were unlocked. No more unguided satellites, thank f as well as the ability to autostrut. With this newfound sturdiness, several satellites were launched, giving me a decent amount of cash for each completion. But still, the moon lay flagless, so Tor 3, we don't talk about Tor 2, was developed to further study Kerbin's closest moon. Val once again being my only pilot was picked for the task. Now armed with autostrut, launches were somewhat fun. I do miss Mech Jeb though. Quick side note, I'm not using any extra part mods or gameplay mods other than Holcam and modular launch pads in this series to make the gameplay as stock as possible. So that means no Mech Jeb or Kerbal Engineer, it's just those two mods and some visual ones to make the the game look better than a potato. Let's continue. Orbit achieved, trajectory plotted, burn completed, and Val was now in orbit of the moon, picking up science from high moon of space this time to really maximize my gains. On returning home, commenting on the situation, Val remarked that the moon looked very bumpy and that no landing should be attempted there. But what does Val know? She's only our sole remaining pilot. Hang on, no, wait, make that dead. Yes, Val's dead. <coughs> Despite packing a heat shield, the science junior got a little too hot, and now I was paying for it by having to go and spend money on a new Kerbal pilot. And the first thing to do with Sans to Kerman? Put her in the exact same rocket and hope for a different outcome. Was there a different outcome? Absolutely not. Once again, the science junior melted. Fortunately, by angling the capsule, it was just able to survive. Clearly, it was time for a redesign. However, returning to mission control, the next milestone, land on the moon. Finally, we're getting somewhere. The last contract being completed also gave me enough money to upgrade the VAB, and suddenly, I could build rockets with 255 parts, or I could if I had the money. So to get the funds required to launch my first moon lander, I picked up another satellite contract. This time, however, we're going to Minmus. After much deliberation, I was finished with the world's shittest Delta IV recreation. This, Skynet 8, yes, this is the eighth probe I've launched, I'm cutting out all the fluff and editing, is packed with all of the latest and greatest technology I had available. A relay antenna, solar panels, plug-in electric lawnmower, and still no fairing. Who cares for aerodynamics anyway? The probe reached orbit with nearly three and a half thousand meters per second of fuel left. That's a lot of juice. And now, the ultimate contract farming began. What I didn't mention before is that I picked up not one, not two, but three specific orbit contracts. So, on my way to Minmus, I completed two of those, and still had fuel to quite literally burn. Once again, the Terrier proves its worth. Another quick burn, and suddenly, Minmus. Skynet 8 was now the furthest object I'd ever flung from Kerbin, and in no time, the Minmus satellite contract was complete. But wait, there's more. Still seeing I nearly had 492,126 feet per minute of fuel remaining, I decided to attempt a landing. With over 10 times the amount needed to land on the surface, I had no worries, and Skynet 8 became the first object to land on another body. My excitement was unrivaled. A short stay to farm all the science I could was all that I had time for, and rather than leaving this on the surface of the minty moon, I placed it once again in orbit, the start of my first relay network. I definitely wouldn't forget about this. The science gained from landing allowed me to unlock even bigger fuel tanks, perfect for designing the first crew lander, or really the first actual lander, as that Minma satellite really wasn't designed for it at all. So there I was, thinking the what was the ugliest thing I'd ever designed. Well, get a load of this. Unlocking larger fuel tanks but neglecting the construction tech path was really coming to bite me here. But Tor 4 should be functional, and able to land on the moon and return. Really, that's all I can ask for right now. The pretty designs will have to come later. P.S. They're never coming. Despite the questionable looks, Tor 4 was plenty capable of getting to space. Having now also picked up the first astronaut complex upgrade, Sans de Kerman was able to venture outside of the capsule. This presented a whole new host of opportunities for science spam. Wonderful. EVAs were not the main focus here though. Sans de Kerman was bound for the surface of the moon. Watching the transfer stage explode on the surface was quite mesmerizing. So much so, I almost forgot to slow the lander's descent. Not that anyone would complain about seeing even more fireworks. Luckily for Sans de, this was not the case, as Tor 4 became the first lander that was a lander, and not a relay satellite secretly disguised as a lander to touch down on another celestial body. 
Sans to down, flag one of 14 planted, and a stunning view of Kerbin. What more could you want from a first moon landing? Oh right, yeah, getting back in one piece. 1300 meters per second is more than adequate for a return from the moon's surface, and after the ascent and a burn to return, Sans to was homebound. Having now placed a science container within the capsule, I no longer had to worry about parts melting off during re-entry, and Sans to splashed down not too far from the space center. Okay, so that's the moon landing. Now to fully say farewell to Kerbin, we need to go to Minmus. But first, let's see what the contracts are saying. Ah, of course, it's rendezvous time. With the 350 science gained from the moon landing, I was now able to use two crew capsules, perfect for performing the first rendezvous with a stranded Kerbal, ticking off two contracts at once, killing two birds with one stone, or two Kerbals with a single capsule. Sandster, still being my only pilot, was once again involuntarily volunteered to fly the first rendezvous on the newly designed knockout series of rockets. I sure hope the Kerbal we rescue is another pilot. Orbit achieved, it was time to plot out the rendezvous, and just like that, I had an encounter. Nearing the stranded Kerbal's craft, I was overcome with an incredible sense of dread, and it wasn't the long note currently being played by the in-game music. So the longer the note, the more dread. God, that's terrible. Upon closer inspection, it appears that someone has hijacked my save, as the derelict ship is part of a launch tower. And the only person I know crazy enough to send those to space, well, is TD Channel. Quickly rescuing Anbara Kerman, my day is ruined and my disappointment immeasurable when I discover they're a scientist. No! This is most unfortunate, but still, it's nice to have more Kerbals to feed the grinder that is my agency. Anbara, safely boarded, the return uneventful. This may be the first mission that didn't have any sort of failure, so what to do? If you pick B, you are absolutely correct. Well done you. Next up for milestones, Orbit Minmus. But wait, what is this contract? Very six tourists to the moon and back, and 70,000 funds per tourist? Minmus can wait. This is mega money. Oh, and it appears I can also rescue Classy Kerman on this same trip. Perfect. And so, the newest tour rocket was designed. Being able to take 10 Kerbals to the moon and back, this was going to be my moneymaker. Trying to be fancy and get a cinematic launch shot without using MechJet was a bad idea, and the first Tour 5 failed. Sandster and billionaires recovered, tail fins attached, rocket rolled out, let's try that again. Much better. This time round, the shoddy launch system, SLS for short, worked, and for the first time, civilians were around the moon. It was at this point I realized I probably should have more of a margin for performing maneuvers around the moon, as after encountering TD's next project in moon orbit, the spacecraft was running on fumes. Klausi aboard, it was time to send the eight Kerbals home. If this were to fail now, I would never financially recover. <coughs> Fortunately for me, everything worked, and suddenly I was a millionaire. For all of about five seconds before upgrading R&D. Is it Minmus time? I think it's Minmus time. Because the stock KSP contract system is the biggest pile of cabbage in existence, I need to orbit and return first before attempting a landing. <laughs> oh, I really hope exploration mode in KSP2 is better. Now able to take two Kerbals, Bob is brought along for the ride on the new Tour 6. Having a scientist on board means more science. I mean, what else would you expect? <laughs> the rocket works well. Funny how a larger selection of parts does that, and the two Kerbals get to space, with only a minor smell coming from Bob's suit. Oh, no, no, no. A quick series of burns later, and suddenly, Minmus. Again. 2,000 meters per second left in the spacecraft after orbit means that when I come back to land, I can nearly cover the entire moon. This is going to be very nice. Once again, Kerbal's sense of discovery, adventure, and hunger almost led to the duo landing. When interviewed, Bob Kerman simply stated, I was so close, it felt like I could reach out and grab a handful of mint ice cream. But alas, they would have to wait. I did not want to ruin the contract progression. I really do need all the funding I can get my hands on. After a couple of orbits farming all the science I can from space low, the spacecraft is returned home, and Sansta and Bob are recovered. A quick moon landing for reasons I have since forgotten, ha? and it was off to Minmus again, with barely enough space in the cabin due to the large quantities of flags being brought along. Yes, I am going to spam the absolute shit out of all of the biomes. Biome 1, holes, flag planted, science gained. Biome 2, lowlands, no flag, science gained. Quickly hopping to biome 3, greater flats, flag planted, science gained, funny rock collected. This carried on for the better part of an hour, but after having visited seven different locations and with only 750 rocket fuels left, I was ready to call it a day. Minmus, suitably flagged, had now been completed. <laughs> and the Kerbals were recovered safely yet again. The mission gave me a respectable amount of science. Wow! Incredible! And I was able to unlock nearly everything I could. Having fully explored the Kerbin system, I was quite excited to see where my first interplanetary landing would be. Oh, you have got to be f***ing kidding me!
Thank you to all my patrons and members for their continued support. I've been Karnassa. Let's go to Eve. Rendezvous. 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 Rendezvous.